So we move on to product positioning, and this is the definition of positioning. It's the image and offering the customer's mind. But the biggest thing is you have to have differentiation. How do they view you towards the competition? When I say competition, again, it doesn't mean direct, necessarily direct competitors. It could also be alternative approaches. And so, for example, when I ask you, think of a cool gadget. Automatically, you think of a product, and that's what I mean by that you're positioned. The most important thing, though, and this is also goes into branding, and this is the most important thing about branding. How do you differentiate yourself? How are you different than somebody else? Because if you're not different than somebody else, what are you? You're a commodity. And if you're a commodity, guess what? Perception of you is low and you can't make a lot of money. Uh, I take that back. I mean, you can make a lot of money in toilet paper, but, <laughs> uh, you know, can anybody name the brand that they particularly use? Uh, the thing is, when you compete, you have to think about, am I the car, am I the driver, or am I about the race? And what that means is, uh, if I'm about the car, that means I'm about technology and my product features. That's what's superior. Am I the driver? Meaning, is the core of my company based on me, based on the people that you have and what they can produce? Or is it the race? Do I understand the market better than anybody else? And that's how you compete. Uh, the thing is, you can do it bottoms up or top, stat, top down. And bottoms up is you see what the customer wants and then you move into that position. Top down means you think about the values of the market uh, and you take that position in the market and then you see uh, what customers uh, can come to you. The thing about startups is if you're a big company you can do top down. You can force your way into something. I mean look at Microsoft. Microsoft kept getting in new and new markets, and they could always capture 10% right away, and they strictly could do that because of their cash. But growing beyond 10%, you have to understand the customer, and that's where Microsoft has always struggled. Uh, the thing about if you're a startup, you're better off going bottoms up. Uh, and does push ever work? Push works when you already know somebody has a need. Push marketing works for things like food, uh, cars, unless you have a luxury car. But if you just make a mass market car like a Camry or something like that, that's why you advertise on TV. Um, push is okay. So in terms of differentiation, are you di the way you're different, to, some of the things they think you're different on is your product attributes, your image, your service factors. But still, it's about the value proposition, and that's economics, utility, or operation, and emotion. And so this is what basically goes into a positioning statement, and that's like, who are you targeting, what are you offering, and how are you relative to somebody else? And so, for example, for Craigslist, a positioning statement for them could be to customers who like to sell their wares. Craigslist allows local selling without the hassle of shipping and packing that auction websites offer. Because why don't I just buy it on eBay? And it's because there's a lag in time and plus. And so all the hassles associated with that, that's why people like Craigslist, because they could go pick it up today. Uh, in terms of strategy formulation, these are the factors that you have to think about. What positions have the most value? which are taken and open, what can you defend, what aligns best with my company, and do we create opportunity? So in terms of strategy formulation, attributes are the factors, and those factors that drive things are driving a preference. There's a difference between preference and a choice, though. Just because I have a preference for you doesn't mean I'm going to choose you. What separates a preference and a choice is a probability function. If I have a preference for you, what's the where it's the probability, I'm going to turn that into choice. Um, and so the thing is, this is called hierarchy of effects. Hierarchy of effects is when basically you have a serial chain of events. And so if you have a serial chain of events, 
A has to happen before I can get to B. Uh, in terms of positioning strategies, here's a list of, you could do it by competitor, like Orbitz versus Hotline. Uh, somebody like Target competes on price. Product class, why does 7up call themselves a young cola? Differentiation, they don't want to be lumped in with cola drinks. Um, when kids get sick, St. Joseph's baby aspirin has been around, I don't think, I think for like a hundred years. And so essentially, how do you position that product? Well, when your kid gets sick, we're the people that you come to. Uh, in terms of uh, data and how you look at it, you can use anecdotal data, which is basically you pick a market and test it. You could do it on collected data, which is essentially surveys. And the thing is, positioning again is about picking space and where you want to occupy and defend. Uh, there are three techniques, and this is straight out of your book, of how you map a position. And it could be done by perceptual maps, preference maps, and joint space maps. Uh, a lot of companies use joint space maps. And so what perceptual maps are, are basically, uh, how do they compare you to the competitors uh, in multiple dimensions? And what it does is it, it maps uh, a customer's leanings. Now, I'm not expecting you to like do the math or anything like that. The nice thing about a map is that it's nice conc concise illustration to see exactly where you are. The thing is some of these these maps are more than two values. Typically these maps are about 15 values. And so again a, per uh, a perceptual map of looking you know how cool is your electronics versus expense and so these are where everybody should uh, be played. The thing is, should Dell be concerned on this map? Well, the problem is, is that they're not the cheapest and they're not the coolest and they're kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, being stuck in the middle, uh, the problem is, is what can happen in a market is it can collapse and the people in the middle are the first ones to go. Why? Because they don't stand out. For example, the jewelry industry, the Tiffany's, and the Zales survived, but most of the people in the middle, like the Bailey Fiddles and Banks, who I bought my wife's uh, engagement ring from, uh, they've gone under. And that's that they weren't cheap enough <laughs> and they weren't high-end enough. Uh, there has to be something special about you. Uh, so in terms of map generation is you list out the attributes and then you figure out uh, and this is relative, but all the different factors you give a weight. And so you can statistically figure this out. Multidimensional scaling is essentially you list out your product against other people's product, and you make a map comparing. And so this is what the bottom line is. This is what it looks like. And so in this case for airlines, what are the things that customers value? And that's on comfort, convenience, service, punctuality. And so this is where American Airlines sits. And so American Airlines could say, you know something? Uh, we need to move towards punctuality. Uh, you move your product. The other thing about this analysis is it tells you uh, how the customer perceives you versus everybody else. Um, the thing is, price as a dimension is really difficult because the person with deeper pockets can always undercut you. So preference space maps, there are two techniques uh, for that. And what preference maps refer to is uh, coming up with the vectors and figuring out how those vectors move and um, how are uh, you compared to that vector space, and joint space includes both with the competitors and your values. And so here's an example of a mixed map. And not only you have the competitors, but you also have the features. And so the preference vector is, this is what the customers value the most from your surveys or from your market data and everything else. And so the question is, is should I stay in my niche in my area or should I move towards the preference vector? But the preference factor is where I'm going to find um, the most customers. 
This slide is basically the most important slide of the entire positioning lecture because it outlines, you can see this clearly, that in the mind of the customer, I'm comparing you to a company and I'm comparing you to a feature. How do you stack up? Um, and so that concludes our lecture about MLP, about MVP, so and beachhead. So what do I need to enter a market? How do I enter a market? And once I enter that market, how am I positioned? And so by understanding how the customer looks at me, I know how I need to change or how to improve.